what's going on? It's Rob from Death Angel here, and I'm here to answer a couple questions I got right here from Andrew Kalilu from Canada. Andrew asks, what was your favorite show you performed with Death Angel in the 80s, and what bands did you play with? Uh, all right. Well, technically we're going to talk about the 80s, because you know, I'm, I'm thinking you're talking about the first era of ours, which I was going to name a couple shows on the Act 3 tour, but that's in the 90s. So you're asking about the 80s, Andrew, and I'm going to have to go back to, you know, there's so many, but I can recall the first time we played uh, in Holland, it was at the Vera in Groningen, and it was on the Ultra Violence Tour, the first time we ever came to Europe, it was amazing, and of course I can't remember what bands we played with back then, that was quite some time ago. But it was amazing because we had no idea that we were going to have that kind of response coming to Europe. We came out here, and uh, which, by the way, I'm talking to you from uh, um, I'm in Croatia right now in um, Zagreb, Croatia, for the first time, and it is also amazing. But anyways, it was incredible. We got out there; the fans were going crazy. The stage diving, ridiculous, insane just crazy pit and thrashing unbelievable packed show and the, and you know and the crowd was asking me for my plectrum which I had no idea what the hell that was and finally I realized it was a pick but that's how green we were we didn't know anything about it it was unforgettable um, you have a two-part question your second question is do you think music today had the same mu ha do you think music today I think you mean has the same musicianship and originality like the 80s did. Um, I'm, tr I'm assuming you're t talking about metal, but you just say, you say music today as compared to the 80s, and, well, it's kind of hard to say. That's a pretty tricky one because, you know, the, the more time goes by, it seems to me it's harder and harder to be original because the things have already been done. There's more and more musicians, more and more bands, and the stuff keeps evolving, and, of course, longer go you know into the past you go it was just easier I think to be original there wasn't as many things coming out yet so mm, to me not quite as original no unfortunately but there's definitely a lot of original music going on out there and you know hybrids of different things and people coming up with their own style and sound but you know if it's a yes or no question no I don't think it is as original so there you have it thanks for the questions and Bye. Hey, this is Damon from Death Angel answering the fan Q&A. We got a question from uh, Romeo in California. Uh, the question is, uh, hey Damien, how long have you been playing bass? How did you get to know Rob? I saw a video of you on YouTube and you guys were playing a club in Oakland. Uh, well, great, great question, Romeo. Uh, I've been playing bass for, uh, I believe it's been, uh, well, I started as a freshman in high school, so I was 14 or 15. I just turned 30, so that makes it like 15, 15 or 16 years. And um, I got to know Rob... Uh, you know, I think it was just uh, it was just a matter of social circles circles working their way in. Um, I got to know Ted through Will. I got to know Will through a Merciful K Fate King Diamond tribute band. Uh, Will and Ted have been lifelong friends. I think ever since they were young kids, and so it was just a natural progression that we worked each other into each other's circles, and it came to the point where um, Ted recommended me to Rob as a bass player, and uh, I, I guess you could just say the rest is history. <laughs> and that's that's about that. <laughs> Um, but since then, it's been it's been a really good it's been a good merging. I, we all get along personality wise really well. Uh, musically, we all vibe out amazingly well, and we have you know similar st views on music and the rest of living. So works out well. <laughs> hey, this is Ted from Death Angel, and I'm answering fan Q and A. And this one's from Romeo in California. Hey, Ted, awesome rhythm playing man. Who are your major influences, and how did you, and when did you start playing guitar? Whoa, thanks, man. I'm glad you're digging it, you know. I love playing riffs, I love playing rhythms, I love holding it down. It's really fun, you know, holding down the riffs and rhythms while Rob's playing leads. Who are my major influences? I would have to say the main major influence would be James Hetfield. Hands down, the best rhythm player in metal. His right hand's like unbelievable. Plus the stuff he writes and is just very incredible and very influential. 
I also dig other rhythm players. Uh, Scott Ian would be one. You know, uh, Pepper Keenan from Corrosion. You know, I like Rudolph Schenker, KK Downing, Malcolm Young. All, all those players are really top notch in their rhythm playing. Also, like you know, later on, I'm really, I was really getting into like Dino Cazares from Fear Factory. I really dig his rhythm style. His right hand too is amazing for what he does in Fear Factory. It's just like a machine. It's pretty unbelievable. How did I start playing, and when did I start playing? Uh, I started playing whew, probably over 20 years ago when I was a young lad. Uh, I had an older brother who picked up uh, an instrument. He picked up bass, so I started fiddling with that. Then when he picked up the guitar, you know, I started fiddling with that too, and I realized, oh, this is pretty fun to play, so I started to learn some songs. And uh, the first song I learned was uh, Merciful Fate's Evil off the Melissa album. That was a, that's a fun tune to play, and you know, I like playing that one. And the other question you asked, how much does your ESP guitar cost? Costs a lot of money, man. I'm still kind of paying off the balance off my credit card, but they're great guitars, you know. I mean, they hold up well on the road. They sound really good. They feel really good, and they look really good for me, you know. I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of great guitars out there, but I think ESP for me, is like hands down, the best. They sound good, and they're just awesome guitars. Hey, what's up? This is Will from Death Angel answering a fan Q&A from Andrew Kalulu, I think, is his last name. Andrew from Canada. Question is, well, it's multiple questions. Um, what is your favorite death metal album and band? What death metal musician would you uh, like to jam with? And last, do you think Possessed started death metal and death perfected it? Um, <clears throat> let's see. Uh... What is my favorite death metal album and band? Uh, I'd say my favorite death metal album is Formulas Fatal to the Flesh by Morbid Angel. Um, I, mean, I know it's not a classic death metal album, and it's not even the classic Morbid Angel lineup. Uh, it's kind of an album that came out late in the game for death metal, but uh, I just think it's fantastic. Just the songwriting, the the sequencing of the album, the instrumentals, everything on it, it's just unbelievable. Uh, too bad David Vincent's not singing on it, that would make it uh, a perfect album if he was singing on it. I'm not uh, dissing Steve Tucker, but uh, David Vincent does have a, a better voice. Uh, but this, it's an unbelievable album. Um, the drumming, trades, guitar work, it's just fantastic. Uh, my favorite death metal band would be Suffocation. Um, just straight up brutal. Uh, they were the first band I ever heard that did that kind of blast beat where everything's on the one. Da, 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 da. And uh, it just blew me away when I first heard it. And I love Frank Mullen's vocals, Terrence Hobbs' leads, and Doug Cerrito's leads. And just everything on the album is killer. And it's probably the best death metal album cover I've ever seen as well. Um, let's see. What death metal musician would I like to jam with? Well, uh, if I was a former death metal band, I'd be the lead singer, because I've always wanted to front a death metal band. And I, I don't have a too shabby of a death metal voice. Uh, but I'd like to dan jam with Trey from Morbid Angel. I think he is the best death metal musician of all time. Uh, he's just Eddie Van Halen. Eddie Van Halen Jr. Um, and I love Eddie Van Halen. Uh, I'd like to jam with him. Uh, Terrence Hobbs. Uh, Chuck Schuldner, like, yeah, those three guitarists are my three favorite death metal guitarists. I like to jam with Mike Smith, um, Alex Webster on bass. So it'd be like a, you know, a super group, death metal super group, and with guest vocals by, like, you know, Frank Mullen and, uh, Donald Tardy. I think Donald Tardy is my, uh, one of my favorite death metal vocalists. And as you can see, I'm very pro American death metal. I like American death metal way much more than European death metal. Sorry, Stockholm. Uh, but uh, I think American death metal is just way more punishing and less melody and more killing. Um, and final question Possessed started death metal. Or do I, do I think Possessed started death metal? And Death Perfected. Well, no, I don't think the uh, Possessed started Death Metal. I think Salted Frost started Death Metal. Um, 
And yes, that's right, I said Celtic Frost. You know how you can tell the difference between a person who's been into Celtic Frost? Oh, I'll just say Frost for now. You know how you can tell the difference between a person who's been into Frost for 10 years and someone that's been into them for 20 years? When you call them Celtic Frost as opposed to Celtic Frost. People weren't calling them Celtic Frost until the second wave of black metal came out. Now everyone tries to be fucking Nordic and all that shit, whatever. 20 years ago, 25 years ago, they were called Celtic Frost. The band themselves called themselves Celtic Frost. Everybody called them Celtic Frost. I'm an old school Celtic Frost fan. They're Celtic Frost. Anyways, I think Death Metal started with Hellhammer and Frost. And, um, I mean, definitely Possessed uh, stepped it up a notch and, uh, you know, made it more into the Death Realm. But I think the seeds were, were sown with Hellhammer and Celtic Frost. And sure, I think Death perfected it. Um, but, <coughs> but beyond Death, Morbid Angel seriously perfected it. So those are your answers there, uh, Andrew. Keep on listening to Death Metal. And Death Angel. <laughs> Alright, hey, hey guys, this is Mark from Death Angel. Once again answering the fan Q&A from uh, our website, www.deathangel.us. And let's see, the latest one is uh, from Jason Martinez. Jason Martinez in Texas. What are your favorite memories? Uh, what are your favorite memories from the most recent North American tour? Wow, that's a tough one. Um, wow, that's a really that's really a tough one. I'd say uh, one of them being my birthday. My birthday show we played uh, February 9th in Chicago at Reggie's Rock Club. That was amazing, just because. Uh, it's always nice to have a birthday on the road. Fans are very appreciative, and uh, it makes the night a little more special. And Chicago is always a special place anyway. So that was definitely one of them. Um, I'd have to say, also very pleasantly surprised with both the Arizona shows. Both the Arizona shows were just out of control crazy. And, um, uh, wow. I mean, compared to the last time we played Arizona, it was just a completely different different vibe altogether, so it felt like a triumph going back there, both in uh, Tempe and Tucson, kicking ass. Uh, the Austin show in DRI <laughs> was amazing, and then also all the Texas shows with DRI, and then the hometown gig in San Francisco, which was the first time we've ever ended a U.S. tour in San Francisco, and we ended it with a bang, had a crazy after party, and uh, it was just an amazing North American tour, and it ended in a... Uh, in a spectacular way. So, there you have it, Jason. Uh, hope all's well. Uh, talking to you from Zagreb, Croatia right now. All right, man. All the best to all of you. Take care.